Welcome back to my channel and uh, today I'm going to talk to you about financial freedom. I know a lot of you out there think, you know, I don't, I don't need this, you know, fuck this. I mean, I just, I'm happy, leave me alone, I'll figure it out, whatever. But I want to tell you that this is extremely important that you pay attention to this today. And uh, the earlier you start your journey towards financial freedom, the easier it's going to be for you. And this is due to the magic of compounding. There's a lot of misinformation out there. There's also a big marketing machine, propaganda machine from Wall Street that is really telling you to invest in the stock market, invest in mutual fund, because they make quite a big buck about it. Well, I don't make any money on this video. I don't make any money selling you anything. Uh, so uh, the only reason why I'm doing this is to help you make more money, make the right financial decision. And uh, this is what this video is about. So let's dive right into it. So financial freedom, why it is so important is because it's inevitable, right? So when we're looking at this, we're looking at time, right? When you're working full time, you want to get out of that. Eventually, you want to get out of that time frame of you know the nine to five and being stuck in time. You want to buy your time back, have more flexibility. You want to be able to to travel for six months in Costa Rica if you want. You want to spend more times with friends and family, all that kind of stuff. Financial freedom can help you achieve. But the big one that everybody uh, is referring to, of course, is retirement and retirement at the traditional retirement age but also financial freedom can help you achieve early retirement as long as you can start early also. Some of the big problems also that I see out there is like 46% of millennials thinks that they're going to need a, a miracle and this is their word, a miracle for them to achieve a secure retirement. And I tend to agree with, with that as well. Two thirds of workers, you know, don't, they don't retire when they expect it. This is part of an employee benefit research survey uh, that they did and they either retire earlier because of health reason, because they had to take care of a loved one, because of a late career layoff where they basically couldn't find another job after they were laid off at a later age. Uh, and uh, then you have a whole group of people that they, they never retire. They just can't afford to retire. They have to keep on working in order to afford to live in their house, in their apartment and put food on the table basically. So we're going to talk about a lot of the, the kind of like the traditional uh, retirement, what does the traditional retirement look like, uh, what I call the three-legged stool. Uh, but also we're going to talk about some of the problems and some of the changes that are happening in that, uh, in that environment. We're going to talk about what people are doing about it and we're going to talk also about the solution. What can you do today to help you achieve financial freedom. And I'm going to have two solutions that are easy to implement, easy to understand, and then that you can start implementing right away. So the three-legged stool. So this is pretty traditional retirement um, kind of like perspective. So there's basically three legs, the pension plan that the company would, uh, would give you, social security, and then a portion of it would be investments and 401k. So this is what they call it, the three-legged stool. So imagine a stool with, with three legs and that would support where you basically your, your retirement can sit on. Um, so 50% of that was coming uh, traditionally from pension plan. These pension plans, they're kind of, they're not the, the, what they call pension plan today. They're more like a defined benefit pension plan where the amount of money you're going to make at retirement, your payment is based on a formula, normally a percentage of final salary multiplied by the number, uh, number of years of service. And um, this is kind of uh, how it works. So if you work 25 years for a, a company, maybe you're going to get like 50% of your final salary in there. Social security uh, is pretty obvious. And then there uh, was 25% from that, 25% from 401k. And that form basically your, your three-legged stool. Pretty solid. But the problem starts now with the pension. I mean, a lot of you, if I ask millennials, hey, what, what's your defined benefit pension plan or your corporate pension plan? Nobody ha knows what I'm talking about here. But this is what used to be, that, that formula-based retirement. This basically put the employer at risk for everything. The employer managed the investment you know, through a, a company. They would uh, pay all the fees. They would also you know, cover all the risk. If the stock market tanked, 
and then you had to pay for pension, well, the employer would have to write a check to the pension plan to make sure that they were funded, that they were solvent. And this caused a lot of problems for employers because the stock market would go down or the economy would go down, and then the employer had to write a check to the pension plan when the economy was, uh, was going down. Imagine you're an employer. Put yourself in the shoes of an employer. The economy goes down, and then all of a sudden you have to write a one or two million dollar check to the pension fund uh, because it's not solvent anymore. So what do you do? What do you do as an employer? Well, you say, screw this. I don't want to do this. I don't want these kinds of surprises. I'm going to convert this to a 401k. And imagine, so this is really kind of like ripping off one of the legs of that stool, that three-legged stool, and then you're sitting on that, well, trying to sit on that two-legged stool. So let's compare the, uh, the two plans together. Uh, on one hand, we have the pension plan here. So right here, the pension. Uh, and then we have the 401k right here. So in terms of investment management, who manages the investment on the pension side? It's a professional manager that's working full-time on managing the investment, the stock portfolio, everything that's, that's in, that, uh, in that pension fund. Now, on the 401k, guess who is the investment manager? Well, you are, unless you put the money in the mutual fund and you pay the fees, but basically you are the one managing, uh, managing that investment. And uh, you're probably not working full-time on managing that investment, so you're not actively managing that. You either put it in a mutual fund and forget about it, and then uh, pay the fees, or you just kind of like do your best uh, with, uh, with if you do like your own investment, you just do your best. But you're not a professional, you're not working on this full time, so what would you expect? Great returns? Probably not. Fees. On the pension side, the employer is paying for all the fees, you don't have to worry about that. On the 401k, guess who pays the fees? Well, you are. Investment risk. Stock market goes down, stock market goes sideways, uh, and there's all kinds of investment risk associated with you know, there's all kinds of risks associated with investment. On the pension side, if there's any kind of investment mistake, the employer is going to foot the bill. They're going to actually have to write a check to fund an insolvent pension plan. And, um, you know, this is the reason why they got out of that business. But, so this is what, what happens on the pension side. On the 401k, guess what happens? Who foots the bill if the stock market goes down? You guessed it. You are. Uh, payment at retirement. So we talked a little bit about this uh, already, but at retirement, what is the amount of money that you're going to get? On the pension side, it's guaranteed. You know already it's a percentage of salary multiplied by the years of service, and that's what you're going to get. You know that you can project kind of what you're going to get out of that, and it's probably going to be around 50% of your uh, final salary. On the 401k, you have no idea, and uh, nobody can really tell you exactly what you're going to get. And the reason for this is that you don't know what the stock market is going to be like. You don't know what the interest rates are going to be like. You don't know what the inflation is going to be like. You don't know how much money you have saved in your 401k. And you have to figure out what the strategy is going to be that you're going to be using to convert this massive sum, hopefully massive sum of, of savings in your 401k into a stream of income. A lot of people are going towards annuity, uh, so that's, but the payout on that is very, very small. But you know, this, is, this is some of the options that you have, but you have no idea how much you're going to be making at retirement. So it really depends on a lot of different variables. And finally, you have penalties. If you want to retire a little bit earlier, a little bit later, so the pension, there's no penalties. In fact, there was incentives at one point for uh, forcing some employees to retire early, take an early pension, and they would actually bump up their pension to make sure that they can, they can get, get out uh, and let some fresh, younger people uh, take over um, these jobs. So on the pension side, no penalties, and sometimes you even had like some incentive to retire early. 401k, different story, um, you know, you have to pay penalties if you're going to go and retire before 59 and a half. So this is something that's very important. So if you want to do early retirement, if you want to retire before 59 and a half, then 401k is probably not a good place to put your money. 
So what are we left with? Well, we're left with that, two, that two-legged stool, if you want to call it that, and uh, focusing really on social security and investment. And now you're going to notice that the investment percentage or the percentage of the that, that monthly payment that I want to receive for retirement, 75% is now has to come from my investment and my 401k. Previously, I had to do only 25%, but now I have 75% of that has to come from investment. You have to really decide kind of where to invest, how to invest, and you're going to have to be more active in managing, managing these funds. Social Security, their whole emphasis is about pushing you to work longer. So they're pushing the, the full retirement age. So it's been, it used to be 65, it's moved to 67. They're probably going to move it to 70, 75, or whatever in the future. So you're probably going to have to wait a lot longer to get your Social Security. So you can't even count on that. If you're planning to retire early, that means 100% of that payment, that passive income, is going to have to come from your investment in 401k. You can't wait on Social Security for that. So again, Social Security is trying to encourage you to work longer. It's pretty obvious. They want If you work longer, you pay more taxes and you get less benefits. So, you know, this is a win-win for the Social Security system. They don't want you to take any benefits, and that's probably one of the, the easiest way for them to solve the massive problem that they have created. So I think uh, I've talked a lot about all the negativity associated with, um, with retirement and financial freedom. Uh, and there are some options, uh, a lot of options out there that, you know, that our people are thinking about or implementing or doing. Uh, one of them that I hear often is that, well, I never, I don't want to retire. Uh, you know, that's, uh, it's not for me, like I really enjoy my job, I don't want to retire. Well, sometimes retirement is not a decision that you make. Uh, sometimes you have health issues, you have to take care of a loved one, as I mentioned. If you work full time for a company, you have late career layoff. You may be forced into retirement. There's a lot of people that are forced into retirement. The other thing too is that as you get older, you are less and less competitive. Your skills are less and less competitive on the marketplace. So if you lose that job, if you, um, if you have a part of a late career layoff, it's going to be very, very hard for you to find a job at the same level, same salary. In fact, the Census Bureau is showing that after 55, there's a trend downwards in terms of the income that people are making. So this is pretty significant. As early as 55 years old, you can already start experiencing a, a lack of competitiveness and a reduction in income. So this is very important. So if you think, I'll oh, never retire, I, I'm making good money and it's going to continue until you're 65, 70, 75, it's probably not going to happen. There's also the whole FIRE movement, you know, financial independence, retire early. It's a very famous uh, movement. So a lot of it that's focused on extreme frugality. Well, I don't know about you, but I enjoy life and I would like to continue to enjoy life for as long as I can. As long as I'm healthy and I can move around and uh, I like eating, I like uh, the good things in life, I like traveling and I would like to continue to do that. So for me, extreme frugality is definitely not on the agenda. I want to be, uh, I want to experience life to its fullest. And I think that should be your goal as well. I think, uh, so that's my, uh, my thinking. The FIRE movement is also based on a, a variation of a 4% rule. And that 4% rule was created by uh, Bill Bengen. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but um, he, he was a, a famous uh, financial advisor. And uh, in 1994, he wrote up this, uh, this proposal and this study. And he was saying that if um, you retire at 65 years old, so this is a key component here, at 65 years old, and um, you, if you have this magic number, this amount of money saved up, that you will be able to retire for the next 30 years. Why 30 years? Because of that in 1994, the life expectancy was around 85 or something like that. So if you retire at 65 and you can retire for all the way to 95, so some people are not going to make it, but uh, in general, most people are going to be okay with uh, a 30 year of investment. And he said that if you have this magic number saved up in the stock market, uh, that you would be able to withdraw 4% of the overall stock market value of the portfolio initially, 
increase it with inflation over time, and then you'd be good for 30 years, right? But the thing is that fi FIRE movement is financial independence, retire early. So the plan is never to be to retire at 65. It was always to retire early uh, at 45 or something like that. So that whole plan doesn't really work if at 45 years old you have a big magic number and it's going to provide retirement for the next 30 years. Well, what are you going to do at 75 years old? You're going to start looking for a job? Don't think so. So you really have, if you're interested in the FIRE movement, you really have to think about it, about how you're planning to do, when you're planning to retire. And uh, there's also a website that's called 4% Rule. So you can put your variables in there. It's going to tell you when you're going to run out of money. Then we have a whole group of people that are just like, just fuck it. I'm just going to do whatever I want. I'm not going to worry about that. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to enjoy life today and we'll figure it out later. This is uh, a lot of people that are basically are disengaged with what's going on. And they say, there's nothing I can do about it. But I'm here to tell you that there is something you can do about it. And I'm going to give you two solutions for that. If you hang in there, I'm going to tell you these two solutions and you can implement that today. So don't despair. We're going to get to a solution. The other, there's a group of people that really must enjoy the outdoors. They want to be off the grid. They want to be in the boonies. They want to be in the woods and they want to live completely off the grid with a bunch of solar panels and, um, you know, and live off the land or something like that. It's a possibility for some people, um, but for most people, it's, it is a little bit, uh, I think we haven't lived off the land for a very long time. Uh, so it would be quite difficult for many people to do that. So not really an option for most people. I think that's uh, one of the options for my chiropractor. I think he's, uh, he built a little cabin out in the boonies, in the, in, outside of uh, civilization with a solar panel. And I think he's planning to, to move there when he retires. And um, so good for him. Not really my thing. Um, so that's it. Then we have a people that they just, you know, ignore it. They say, well, what, what problem? Um, I'll figure it out. The government is going to figure it out. You know, they've never disappointed me in the past. So I'm just going to keep sarcasm here. Uh, never disappointed me in the past, so I'm going to wait for the government to solve the problem for me. Um, so, let's get to some solutions here. Ignoring is not an option. So, if you're into the ignore it bucket, you can take action. There are solutions. Don't, again, don't be discouraged. There are some things that you can do. A lot of uh, Wall Street propaganda is talking to you about, you know, some things like uh, high interest savings investment. Well, a lot of these high interest savings account, they, the interest is always lower than inflation, right? Always. So that means that you're always going to be losing purchasing power. Maybe good at the beginning, but eventually what's going to happen is that you're not going to be able to buy the things that you want to buy. Next is going to be uh, mutual funds. So mutual fund returns vary greatly. So a lot of people are, uh, you know, one year you're going to look at a mutual fund and going to be beating the stock market. And then for the next five years, it's going to go down. Uh, you know, the fees are often very, very high. Uh, if you want more information about the mutual funds, um, you can look at a video, a documentary that's called The, the Retirement Gamble. And they talk about this uh, Van, the Vanguard founder, um, Jack Bogle, and he talks about mutual funds and how the fees are affecting your return at the end. And it's pretty dramatic. The fees don't seem that high, but it has a dramatic impact on your retirement savings. So when you're planning to use these savings for retirement. So Jack Bogle, founder of Vanguard, which happens to be a mutual fund uh, company uh, that is basically recommending don't fall for this. Again, it's part of that propaganda that mutual funds is a great thing for you to invest in, and, uh, but it's not really. Stock market, if you want to be active stock market investor, then you have to deal with transaction fees. You have to sell stocks, buy stocks, so you have to deal all of that. If you're pretty passive, it may not be that bad, but you still have to pay some transaction fees and pay taxes. You always have to chase returns. So can you beat the stock market? Can you always, can you guarantee that you're going to beat inflation year after year uh, if you invest in the stock market directly? I doubt it. There's a lot of people that claim that they can be beat the stock market, but not many people can on a regular basis. And then we have crypto, the, what I call the crypto trap. 
Now, who makes money in crypto? I think scammers and rich scammers. And then you have a bunch of lucky people that just happen to be at the right place at the right time. And then they made a lot of money. But crypto is a scammer's paradise. Uh, and uh, that's why they want you to get in there. There's no purpose in crypto. You can't go and buy anything in crypto. It is pure speculation. And uh, it's perfect. It's a heaven for scammers. They want you to get in there or oh, buy into this, uh, this particular crypto and then it's going to go up. The basic pump and dump kind of schemes where they got to promote the, uh, a cryptocurrency until it goes up and then they dump it and then you see it go down and then it's too late. You've lost your money. Um, so the crypto, I would stay completely away. It's the, one of the worst games out there and it is a game. Now, I've talked about everything that doesn't work. I've talked about everything that's wrong. I've talked about everything that gave up. And I hope you're not one of those that gave up. If you stayed until this point of the video, now is the time where I'm going to show you what works. And uh, two solutions. And you're going to implement really a combination of both. Uh, and the number one is going to be ETF, which is Exchange Traded Fund. This is basically a fund that replicates a stock market index or a stock market like the Dow Jones or something like that, right? The S&P 500. So it's basically pegged to the market. It replicates the market. It has exactly the same returns as the market because the people that are managing this fund, quote unquote managing, they're just replicating what's happening in the, in the stock market. So right, the, the exact number of stocks, the exact percentage. So there's no thinking behind it. They don't pretend that they know better than the stock market. If you do this, then you don't have to pay high fees. So these, these uh, ETFs are very low fees. The returns are typically above inflation. And of course, the returns are similar, the same as the stock market in general. You want to have this as part of your portfolio for the reason that it is more liquid. So if you need funds at a specific time, it's easy for you to take the money out of your ETF and use it. Will you pay taxes? Yes, you will pay taxes, but there's not going to be any fees associated with taking the money out, just taxes in terms of the gains that you have made with your investment. Some of the cons on the ETF is that no leverage and the timing is kind of important because if the stock market tanked at that point, then you're taking a little bit more ETF, like units of ETFs that you may not have had if the stock market was super high. But, you know, that's, that's a very small uh, disadvantage. The big thing here with the ETF is that liquidity is going to be uh, good for inflation as well. Inflation protection is good return. You don't have to think about it. You're kind of hands off. Now, the number two, single family rental. I think I mentioned that before. Uh, single family rental is critical to have as part of your, uh, your portfolio. The reason for this is that it's going to provide cash flow. It's going to provide cash flow at the beginning when you buy the investment, but also the cash flow is going to increase over time. And the reason for this is that you're going to have a lot of your expenses are going to go up also, but your mortgage, the biggest expense that you have on that a single family rental is going to stay the same. The payment is going to be the same, same every month but your rent is going to go up every year. So over the years, your cash flow is going to go up, which is fantastic. Again, protects you against inflation uh, on that side. Appreciation. So appreciation, very important. You know, your property is going to go up in value over time. And I'm going to talk a little bit later about how you use that appreciation. It grows in values tax free, but how can I take that? How can I leverage that later on in life to, to help me with my retirement and financial freedom? Then it comes leverage. Leverage is absolutely key. Leverage by leverage, I mean having debt or mortgage on that particular single family rental or its portfolio. And the advantage of this is that with, let's say, 20% of the value of the property, my down payment, I have a much bigger asset. So for $20,000, I can have a, an asset that's $100,000. That whole $100,000 is appreciating. So that means that my appreciation is not just like the same like 3%, 4% that you see uh, advertised on realtor.com. 
This is five times that, that uh, it multiplies that appreciation five times because of leverage. This is critical. Uh, the other thing is cash flow. If, if I have only $20,000 for one property, with a, if I have a $100,000 investment, then I can buy five houses for that, and it's really going to significantly increase the cash flow that I will make. Even though I have to pay five mortgages on five different houses, it's going to be, the cash flow is going to be significantly higher. Then we have tax advantages, obviously. And, um, and the bonus here is kind of like, what do you do with that appreciation? Let's project yourself, uh, let's say you bought this single family rental or these single family rentals, you know, 20 years down the road, 25 years down the road, and now it's paid off or there's a significant amount of equity. It's worth $200,000, let's say. I want to get that money, I want to be able to use it. Well, you could refinance that property and get the, uh, the loan out. So on a $200,000 property, you'd get $160,000 cash in your bank account that you can use. Now, are you paying taxes on that? No, you're not paying taxes because it's not income. It's a loan that you're making to yourself. So there's no income to be paid there. Who pays for the mortgage? The tenant is paying for the mortgage. So you don't have to pay for that. Also, you have an additional interest expense uh, payment in here. So that's also tax deductible. So that's going to help with your taxes. So I win, 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 win all around, uh, basically. So this is, this is a fantastic tool that you can use later on when it's a retirement type and get the equity out to work for you and provide additional income. Well, if you made it to the end of this video, I want to congratulate you. I think it's, uh, it's quite an achievement in itself. I know a lot of that stuff is pretty boring, but this is extremely important. This is your life. This is your future life, and you have to start planning for it today. I know financial freedom is boring. Investing in ETF is boring. Investing in single family rental in real estate is boring. But boring is good. Embrace the boring. Boring means it's secure. It's safe and it's going to get you there. It's uh, kind of like a long journey. Like I do a lot of biking and stuff like that. I do like uh, double centuries, 200 miles on the road. And uh, it is very, very boring. But the reward at the end when you get to that 200 mile mark is just absolutely phenomenal. It gives you a great high. And it's going to be the same thing with you on your financial freedom journey. You're going to get there and you're going to say, Oh my God, this is so great that I made these investments, that I bought these single family rentals throughout my journey and add that to my portfolio. This was the best decision I've ever made. And look at me now, I get to sit on the beach or whatever you, you enjoy in life and I get to relax and enjoy it and do what I want. Remember, investing is a marathon. It's not a sprint. The reason for this is that investing really relies on compounding because the earnings that you're making earlier, they compound and they grow over time. They multiply over time. This is a long-term game. This is a marathon. So there's no point in you kind of waiting to, to get to that finish line and then all of a sudden start running. You want to get a slow, consistent pace and disciplined pace all the way through the race. So that means that you need to start today so that you have more time to do it. Don't delay, start today. My goal with these videos is to help you make more money. And if you like that too, make sure you like and subscribe and see you in the next one.